All right, everyone. So what we've got, our task is that we want to set up a uh, child theme. We want to do this so that we are able to edit our, our theme without the repercussions of updating. So we are going to uh, use the codex, the instructions straight from WordPress. They're not as complicated as they seem. So step one in general, we need a new folder to house our child theme. So you want to go back to your folder where you've got the list of all of your themes. Remember that's inside of the, the WP content folder inside of themes. So once you see you're in the folder, you should see the, the, the 13, 14, and 12 themes there. You've got a button that says New Folder. So click New Folder. Or you can do right-click, New Folder. And as per the documentation, we'll call it the name of the parent theme plus child theme, which is 2014-child. And so here now we've got a new folder called 2014 child. Again, the name doesn't matter because what matters is the style sheet that we're about to, to create. So what we need to do here is um, we need, I think the easiest way to do this is to get an existing, uh, the existing CSS file and edit it. Notice, if we go back to the codex, this is the most basic thing that we need in the CSS file. Every theme has a, a CSS file, style.css, and it has information about itself. What is the theme name? That's the name that we'll see when we're switching from theme to theme. Theme URI, or theme address. Where did that theme come from? And again, this is always usually filled in once you download a theme. A description. Well, when we say, give me info about that theme, there's a description. Who created it? Where does it come from? And here's new, something new, because we're working with a child theme. We're going to add a line that says template and the name of the parent theme. We could add a version number, tags, text domain, etc. The only things that are required, and I believe it's named here somewhere, the only things that are required are the name of the theme and that it is a template of a particular, a child of a particular theme. Those two lines are the only things that we need. We technically don't need where it says who's the author and what version and all of that. But again, instead of us writing this and writing it wrong, we're going to copy from, an ex from the existing um, uh, from the existing parent and then copy and paste and then edit it as we need it. So here's what we'll do. Um, we're back on the folder here where all our themes are. Open up your 2014 child theme folder. It's empty, so we're going to right-click the empty area and select right-click new text document. It says, okay, new text document. You're going to delete that name and call it style.css. Remove the txt. It should say style.css. Press enter. It's going to complain. Are you sure you want to change the extension? Yes, we know what we're doing.
So now in my 2014 child theme, I've got this style sheet. This is a collection of the styles of my site. What's the size of the font? What's the color of the background? What's the size of the logo, etc.? It's all stored here, but it's empty. And what it needs to do, according to the codex, is to have a list of what is the name of the theme and what is the parent theme. So everyone has that style CSS file there? That's right. New text document. So once we've got that name, you're going to right click it, and we have edit. Right click edit, and you should get uh, the built in text editor, Notepad. It's just a very basic text editor. Did everyone open up that notepad to edit this? Okay, so I want to copy some code from the existing theme and paste it into this screen. So that means we'll go back to the folder right here. We'll go, we'll press back, uh, we'll press back button there so we go back to see all of the themes. We were just in the 2014 child folder. Now we need to open the 2014 folder. So open your 2014 folder, and in here at the bottom, we've got style.css. You want to right click once you find it in 2014 parent. You're going to find style.css, right click it. Edit. Looks pretty ugly. Okay, let's uh, let's see. Um, it is okay. We're we're gonna do it this way instead. Uh, this file here. Go ahead and close it. <coughs> It's a little too jumbled up. Close this file that just opened. We'll do it this way instead. Uh, right click it again, right click style CSS file, and this time select the second one, edit with notepad plus plus. This is just another text editor that we can use to edit our code, and I believe this one will show things prettier. Okay. If you get a little update thing, just cancel that. So edit with Notepad plus plus. So I'm going to select cancel on this, and then at the top here you've got every all the code a little bit nicer. And notice you've also got line numbers. So one through eleven. Yeah, 1 through 15, these are the line numbers that we're going to need. Notice from line 1 to 15, we're going to select all of that and copy it. We're in a different screen. I'll help you in a moment. Let me continue. So you're going to select everything from here, from line 1 to 15. Click and drag to select it all. And then you're going to right click and copy. This is the code that defines the basic parent theme. And we're going to use this as a jumping off point for our child theme. So lines 1 through 15, right? It's slash asterisk and then asterisk slash. We're going to select all of that. Right-click, copy. And then on your other window, your style CSS file, this is the one for the, um, the child, right? We open Notepad++ to just look at the code of the parent. 
to copy. And then on your style CSS file of your child, you're going to right click and paste. Okay, actually, that wasn't going how I wanted. So, so what we'll do is, okay, what we're trying to do is copy some code. And sometimes the code looks pretty like this, and sometimes it looks jumbled like that. We're using plain old notepad that comes with Windows, which often shows things jumbled. But over here, I said instead, let's use Notepad++, which shows it nicer. So I guess we need to open Notepad++. We use, need to use Notepad++ for both files. So instead, what we're going to do is on the CSS file of uh, the child, and I can tell which it is because it's got the plain notepad icon there, the blue one. We're just going to close that and select not to save. Don't save. And instead, you know, we'll, we'll leave Notepad++ open. We do want that one. Uh, we'll go back to the folder. Go back to the child theme, and we're going to open that CSS file with Notepad++ as well. So we'll go back to 2014 child. There's our style CSS file. You're going to right-click it, edit with Notepad++. And what should happen is, back on Notepad++, now we've got two tabs. The first tab is the code of the parent theme, and the second tab is the code of the child theme. So now I can right-click and paste. So my style.css file of my parent, I've copied from there to there. So what we need to do here is add that one line that the codex says. It says, this is a template. Um, so I've got line 2. At the end of line 2, press Enter. And we're going to write template, colon, the name of the parent, theme, which is 2014. So what this line of code is saying is that um, 2014 child is based on the template, or its template is 2014. What I'll also do here on line 2, at the end where it says theme name 2014, I'm going to add a space and type child. You can type it in capital letters here. That's what will appear in the, in, in the dashboard. When this is all done, we're going to go into the dashboard, into the themes, and now it'll say 2014 and 2014 child. So whatever we write on that line there, theme name is what will appear in the dashboard. And all of this works because of line 3 that says 2014 is the parent of 2014 child. We don't need to change any of the rest. You could if you want. For example, description. We could write, this is my child theme. It's fine. You can change other things about it, like um, author. You can write me. You, know, you can change whatever you want there. But really, these two lines are the two that I've changed, lines 2 and 3. 2 is optional, and 3 is required.
basically what we've done is what the codex is telling us. In the child theme directory, create a style CSS file. This is the only required file to make a child theme. The style sheet must start with the following lines. That's what we copied and pasted. And then it goes on to say, you can change each of these lines to suit your theme. The only required line is the theme name and the template line. Notice in the example, they wrote template lower there. doesn't matter where you put it. We put it right after the theme name so that quickly we can see this is a child, this is the template. We'll add one more line and then this will be complete. And then we'll do help if people need it. The next line is we need to basically import all of the features of the parent theme into our current theme so that we can uh, edit them. And that continues here with our example in the codex. We'll do it in a moment, this line of code, import. So here's what we do. After all of this code, 16 lines of code, you have asterisk slash. Press enter a couple of times. I'm on line 18. And we'll start to type the at symbol. We'll start to type the at symbol, import, under uh, space, URL, and then this rest of the code here. All right, so one at a time. Question here. Are you in the parent CSS or the child CSS? What does the codec tell us? Child theme. We're working on the child theme. So make sure you're in the style sheet file of the child theme. To confirm, you want to look on the, on the address up here at the very top and make sure it says 2014 child. Notice it's only 16 lines long. The other one is like 200. So you, you do this in the child. Second and question. then what, what do you do after? Can you scroll down? And then your question here. That's back what I lost. Question. That's an at sign. It's an at sign, yes. yes. Is there a space between URL and. Question. Would the at symbol name always be just you know, no spaces, no dashes? Or exactly. Whatever the name of the folder is, you type it exactly. So if the folder had dashes or underscores, you would type that. So up here, the question was about our template. Yeah, it's the exact name of the folder. So if it has underscores, you would put underscores or dashes. And so what we're saying here on this import is, let's import the code, the style, the, the, the design of the previous theme. So here's my code so far. And then we're going to type dot dot slash. 2014, the name of the folder, 2014. Slash style dot CSS. And then we wrote all of this at import space URL parentheses quote blah blah blah. Then we need quote parentheses. So add a quote at the end here, and then parentheses, and then a semicolon. Don't forget this part here at the end. Here we're saying we're going to import the style of the parent. And then, okay, where's the parent? Here's the address. Here's the URL to the parent. Dot, dot, slash, 2014 folder, slash, style, dot, CSS, end quote, end parentheses, semicolon, end of line.
So this is why I'm saying there are plugins out there that that do this for you. I have not tested them. I usually do it this way, the hard way. And then the more times you do it, the easier it, it, it the more it makes sense. But once we've got this code written here, uh, at the top of uh, Notepad++, we want to click this little save icon so that our file is saved. Or you can go to File, Menu, Save. So you want to save your file. Yes. Exactly. So if you know a little bit about uh, coding or HTML and such, that should look familiar. That that means exit the current folder and then go up one level, and then you'll find the 2014 folder. So if you don't know exactly what that means, just trust me. That's what that means. You have to write it this way. So if you were doing your own theme, you would write dot dot slash my theme slash style dot CSS. Whatever child you're making a theme out of. You put your theme's name right there. Question? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Um, text domain. Also, Oh, let me see that. Uh, text domain. Oh, okay, good eye. I did, uh, good, it does say there on their example that if you're making your child theme and you have a text domain to also market the name of your child, technically, I guess, but since the only things that are required are theme name and template, technically we could remove that and I notice that it's written in a different way. It's written 20-14-child. Um, well, I'm going to follow the documentation and write it how they're saying. So what we're talking about is here on line 12, ours apparently is still pointing to the old name. So I guess according to the documentation, I usually remove that myself. But just to keep it like how the documentation says on line 12, We'll call that 20-14-child. And then don't forget to save that again. So did you say that's required the text change there? No. That one's not required. That whole line we could remove. Yes. That how you import your own. Mm -hmm. the, the letters CSS and mine are red. Is there a reason that they're important? Oh, are you sure you spelled everything right? If, if sometimes Notepad gives you different colors to show you there might be an error, and sometimes not. It's
So this is why web developers can be so highly paid and cranky, because if you don't write one line correctly, even one character, if I were to accidentally, you know, delete that one slash, the whole site breaks. One character. So that's why uh, we're doing the copy and paste here. We're checking our code. Notice mine, everything is green, and then it's blue down here. That's also what Notepad is trying to tell you, uh, that if it's correct. I saw for a few of you that, it, that you looked like this, that everything's blue and blue, and a little black down there. What happened in that case was that you didn't copy everything. You've got slash, or asterisk slash, and at the beginning you forgot to perhaps copy the uh, slash asterisk. So again, this is pretty advanced. Most people never do this. They can just use WordPress and you're fine. We're doing it because we're forward thinking. We are eventually going to update our code and um, update our themes and such, and it could erase our code. So by making a child theme, we safeguard ourselves from that. We'll do one more thing and then uh, it's just about time to wrap up. So we're going to make sure we save our work. If you still have a little red floppy disk there, that means you haven't saved. So you want to file and save. We're done with this behind the curtains stuff. We've made the folder, we've made the CSS file, we've written the code. Now we can get back into the WordPress dashboard. We can go back to the front end. We'll go to the WordPress dashboard and activate our child theme. So back to the web browser. Back to back to um, back to localhost slash wp4 slash wp dash admin. Right. We go back to the admin screen. We'll go over to, we'll hover over themes and select themes. And now we've got the pre existing themes and a brand new 2014 child theme. And it has no thumbnail because we didn't add a thumbnail. That's fine. What's happening there is notice if you look at the 2014 the parent theme, there's a file called screenshot.png. That's the screenshot that appears when you preview it. Every theme has, if I go to 2013, screenshot.png. There's the screenshot. Ours doesn't. That's why it's empty. So don't worry too much about it. We'll address it later. But uh, that's why ours doesn't have a screenshot, because we didn't add a screenshot. We've only got style.css file. And notice to actually use our child, and notice we wrote here, 2014 child. That was the first line, wasn't it? 
And that could be anything we want. It could be called my theme. What I mean is right here on line two. Theme name, 2014 child. If I call it my theme, my cool theme, that's what will show up. And as you click on theme details, the details appear. But we want to activate. And then so now this screen shows that our active um, theme is our 2014 child. And if we visit site, it should be the same as before. Nothing really changed. All that hard work, you know, what did what did we what, what do we show for it? Well, it's all a sound foundation that will help us in the future. Can we do this each week? <laughs> no. We're going to do this one more time next week, because next week we're going to resurrect our site. We're going to start with a starting point, now with a blank WordPress site. We're going to resurrect our site from the previous class. We will have to do this one more time, but practice makes perfect. We'll do it one more time, and then every time that we do the duplicator, it's all saved there. And then week to week, we don't have to do it again. We just have to do it once. So, uh, how many of you felt that this was hard? Raise your hand. I forgot. How many of you felt that this was really hard? Raise your hand. <laughs> no problem. We'll, uh, we'll have lab time very soon, and uh, our videos are, are available there. So, again, this is why uh, sometimes setting up a website and such it could be expensive, because you can simply turn on WordPress and start using it, but you're kind of working on a shaky foundation because you're going to see every once in a while a, a, a little button that says update. And most people will think, I like updates. I update my Mac. I update my Windows. Let me click update. And now all your customization is gone that you paid for, perhaps. So with a child theme, it'll save your customization if you started from the beginning. And so we spent the day doing a lot of back-end stuff. We looked at the database. We looked at the files in the, in, the, in the file manager. We set up WordPress again from scratch for practice. We created a child theme. We did a lot of, honestly, complicated stuff. The more you do it, the more it makes sense. So when we come back next week, you don't have to save this. I'm not going to install Duplicator and save this. You can if you want. Challenge yourself, you know. Install Duplicator, set it up. Uh, and uh, when we come back next time, we'll resurrect the site. Question? Uh, it's, uh, my sidebar is a description between uh, icons. How do, how do they make that on? I think what you did was if you click Collapse Menu, they become little icons. Yeah, now uh, expand. So click the last icon at the bottom, and that comes back to Descriptions. Okay, thank you. So at this point, any general questions on what we've talked about? We'll do help in a moment, but any general questions? So again, today what we've got, you don't need to save it. It's just a blank site. It doesn't have much to it at the moment, so I'm not going to save it. When we come back, come back next time, I'll give you a site to start off with, and we'll continue. We'll have to do this child theme one more time. We'll have to do that um, permalinks thing one more time. And then we'll get started and we'll talk about um, customizing the theme. Now that we've got a child theme, well, I want a red sidebar. I want to customize. And then we'll get into the shopping cart. So, so I have a question. So for yes. every website, even if it's the same client in a different website, you have to store the, the whole WordPress, all the plugins, and then if you want to customize the thing, then you have to do the child thing. That's the best way to do it, I would say, yes. Um, do the child theme before any customization. Uh, upload or update. Update the WordPress. Just update, but I don't have to go to WordPress.org. No. You don't have to go back to WordPress.org because up here you'll have a button that says update WordPress. Yeah, but let's see that it's for every client. Like I have three different clients. I'm going to be there's three different websites. So I have to go through the whole process for every client, right? In that case, yes. It's not that I can save the WordPress software in my computer and just do it locally. I 
could just keep the files in the server. You have to do the whole thing. Well, it depends on how complicated you want to be because that could be one possible way to do it. Once you save a basic WordPress setup like this, you could make a duplicator of it well, and then template, and use the duplicator as a template and then resurrect four sites. Right, so I will save all my plugins, everything we have yeah. done, and save as a template, and every time it's something for somebody just personalize yeah. that. The problem with that is then you've saved your site at a certain point where you had WordPress 3.9 right. and now you're making templates out of 3.9. And then I have to update this. Yeah.